Hello, my littles. It's so good to see you. Welcome to Mammy's Corner, and I'm Mammy. I know you know that, but there are some people that may not know that I'm Mammy. So it says, welcome to Mammy's Corner. All right, are you ready? Let's get started. Let's do our affirmations for today. All right, it says, I am loved. Can you say that louder? Let's say it louder. I am loved. Very good. Who loves you? God loves you. Who else loves you? Mammy loves you. Don't you forget it. All right, let's do the next affirmation. It says, I am good. Oh, very good. Are you good? You better be good. Let's say it louder. Ready? I am good. Very good. Now for the last one. I am kind. Say it louder. I am kind. Do you mean it? Do you really truly mean that you're good and kind? Yay! Of course you are. You're my good and kind littles, aren't you? All right. So Mammy's going to be reading in the Disney Adventure Storybook. But before I do, make sure you find that comfortable chair or maybe a comfortable cuddy buddy or maybe a blanket that's your favorite blanket you want to cuddle with or favorite stuffed toy or favorite pillow you want to cuddle with. And let's get comfy for Mammy to read to you. But don't forget, make sure you hit that thumbs up like button so I know that you like my stories. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's get started. Today's Disney Adventure Stories brings to you, do do do, Lilo and Stitch, tons of trouble. Have you guys seen the video? Is Stitch always tons of trouble? You better not be. You're my littles, you better be good and kind. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's get started. In a faraway galaxy, an alien scientist named Jumba Jakuba made a one-of-a-kind creature called Experiment 626. The creature's dangerous, destructive ways quickly landed him and Jumba in prison. Soon, 626 escaped and headed to planet Earth. The Grand Councilman ordered Jumba and his new partner, Pleakley, to capture 626 and bring him back. In exchange, Jumba would no longer be imprisoned. But 626 had a plan of his own, and it did not involve being captured. He ended up in an animal rescue center on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. He hid his spikes, antenna, and extra legs and pretended to be a dog. <gasps> what? What's a dog say? Yeah, good job. A while later, a little girl named Lilo and her older sister, Nanny, Nani, went to the animal rescue center to find a pet. Go pick something out, Nanny said to her sister. Lila walked past the counter toward the kennel. When she saw 626, she knew she had to have him. What is that thing? Nanny cried when her sister and 626 appeared in the waiting area. A dog, I think, the rescue lady answered nervously. His name is Stitch, Lilo announced. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? Well, let's find out. Outside the rescue center, Jumba and Pleakley watched closely. They knew they had to capture Stitch at just the right moment without harming any humans. After Lilo spent the day trying to train Stitch, the two went to the restaurant where Nanny worked. Lilo tried to tell Stitch how bad he'd been, but he was more interested in eating cake. Then he smelled something. He followed the scent to a table of tourists. Aha, one well, of the tourists cried, grabbing hold of Stitch. It was Jumba in disguise. Stitch tried to free himself, but it was no use. Finally, Stitch unhinged his jaw and pretended to eat Bleakley's head. Look at that. When Nanny finally pulled Stitch off Bleakley, he wrangled free and ran back to Lilo. Oh, my stars. How scary. Look at that. Nanny lost her job because of Stitch's stunt. But that was just the beginning. When they got home, Lilo told Stitch, This is a great home. You'll like it a lot. She gave him a pillow so he could feel how soft it was. But he just shredded it. Look at that. In the kitchen, Stitch pulled the blender off the counter and examined it curiously. The glass jar was filled with a pink liquid. He turned the blender on. Hey, what are you doing? Lilo asked. Stitch removed the lid to look inside the jar. Splash! The liquid mixture went all over Stitch, who thought the blunder was attacking him. He wrestled with it and got the pink liquid all over the kitchen. 
Rut row? That's not good, is it, my littles? Later that night, Lilo took Stitch to her, up to her room. She pointed to a cardboard box with a pillow and blanket tucked inside it. This is your bed, she told him. Stitch wasn't interested in sleeping in a box, so he climbed into Lilo's bed. Next, he grabbed a precious picture of her parents, took her favorite doll, and ruined one of her drawings. Finally, Lilo said, You wreck everything you touch. Why not try and make something for a change? Within minutes, Stitch created a little city from objects in Lilo's room. But once he was done, he knocked it over. No more caffeine for you, Lilo decided. He's a little destruction there, huh? Do you think that you could get away with something like that? Uh-uh, I know. All right, let's go on. The next day, Nanny went to look for a new job. A social worker named Cobra Bubbles had been watching Nanny and Lilo. He told Nanny that if she didn't take care of Lilo, he would take have to take her sister away. While Nanny applied for a job at the local grocery store, Lilo decided to teach Stitch how to behave. First, she showed him how to dance. Unfortunately, their dance routine knocked the grocery store owner into a fruits and vegetables display, so Nanny didn't get the job. Next, Nanny applied for a job at a coffee shop. Lilo continued with Stitch's lessons. She handed Stitch a ukulele, but when he played it, the high notes shattered the windows of the uh, coffee shop. Thanks to Stitch, Nanny didn't get that job either. Things didn't look good. Oh no, what's going to happen? Let's find out. Stitch realized that he was making life worse for Lilo and Nanny, so he decided to leave. He spent the night outside. By morning, he realized how important Lilo was to him. He started to go back, but just then Jumbo cornered him. Don't run, ordered Jumbo. Come quietly. That wasn't Stitch's style, though. He ran toward the house. Come back here, Jumbo yelled as he tore through the trees with his plasma blaster. Stitch entered through the dog door and led Lilo out of the line of fire. Jumbo burst in and began a furious battle with Stitch. Furniture was destroyed left and right. Frank Lilo ran to the phone and called Cobra Bubbles. Aliens are attacking my house, she cried. They want my dog. Lilo didn't know what to do. How scary, huh? Suddenly the house began to shake. Bam! Stitch smashed the wall, carrying a car. He wallowed Jumbo with it. Walloped, excuse me, he hit him. He walloped Jumbo with it, but the alien just shook it off. Before long, the entire house was destroyed. Soon, Cobra Bubbles and Nani arrived. While Cobra and Nani argued about what would happen to Lilo, the little girl ran into the forest. Stitch followed her. Wanting to apologize, Stitch handed Lilo a photo of her family, which he had managed to find amid the remains of the house. You ruined everything, she cried, taking the photo. Then Stitch transformed back into his original alien shape. Lilo began to understand that he had never been a dog, that he was really an alien. You're one of them, she asked, not quite believing it. At that moment, an alien named Captain Gantu appeared. He had been sent by the Grand Council when to finish the job Jumba and Pleakley had started, catching Stitch. Being 20 feet tall, Captain Gantu easily captured Stitch with a net, but he also trapped Lilo. Gantu was very proud of his triumph, and here I thought you'd be difficult to catch, he said, he told Stitch with a smirk. <laughs> Silly me. Gantu put Lilo and Stitch into a containment pod on the back of his ship. As the captain went into the cockpit to power up the ship, Stitch began his escape. He popped out of the pod and climbed on top of it and tried to free Lilo. Before Stitch could get a grip, though, the ship's main engines fired and sat him crashing to the ground. The spaceship took off with Lilo aboard. Nanny arrived just as the spaceship flew into space. Lilo, she cried. <gasps> How scary. Wham! Something hard made contact with Stitch's head. He looked up to see Nanny holding a thick branch. Okay, talk. I know you had something to do with this, she said to Stitch. Now where's Lilo? Talk! I know you can. Before he could respond, Stitch was slammed by a plasma blast and handcuffed by Jumba. But that didn't stop Nanny. She pleaded with the aliens for their help. In the end, it was actually Stitch who persuaded Jumba and Bleakly to help rescue the little girl. 
Nanny and the three aliens took off in Jumbo's, Jumbo's huge red spaceship. Before long, they cut up to Gantu's ship, and a great battle began. Gantu was shocked that Stitch had freed himself. He fired on Jumbo's spaceship, forcing Jumbo to turn sideways and use the lush green mountains for cover. Hold on, yelled Jumbo as he made another quick turn. He swung the ship back around and hit Gantu's spacecraft. Stitch then jumped onto Gantu's ship to rescue Lilo. Soon, Captain Gantu was defeated, and Lilo was freed. Yay! Once everyone was safely back on the ground, it was decided that Stitch could stay on Earth and that Lilo could stay with Nani. Everyone could see that Stitch had finally learned what family was all about and how to stay out of trouble. The end. Oh, wow! How exciting was that? Oh, my stars. And Stitch was, oh, really in trouble all the time, but he didn't know any better. So when you don't know any better... You need to make sure that you ask before you do anything and get into trouble because we don't want you to get in trouble, do we? No. All right. That's it for today, my littles. Now, who loves you? God loves you. Who else loves you? Mammy loves you. But Mammy loves you bestest. Don't forget it. All right. Until next time, my littles, be good and be kind.